Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. In the last 24 hours, more than a thousand pages of newly unsealed documents from a case involving the disgraced financier and convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein were released to the public. They were unsealed. That includes about 300 in just the past few hours, which we've been sifting through here. And journalists, both in our news organization and all over, have been poring over those documents. And I have to say, so far, we've not learned much that we did not already know, despite the tantalizing promise there would be some big reveal. For instance, we know that Epstein actively cultivated relationships with powerful men, and in some cases women, in prominent institutions, from government to finance to academia to philanthropy. We know that Epstein trafficked and sexually abused young women and girls. We know he owned a private island in the Caribbean where some of this abuse took place and that he flew some of those same rich men he cultivated relationships with there on his private jet. But the lack of some big bombshell revelation in the new documents has not stopped Fox News and others in right-wing media from going absolutely all in on this story. And while information about Epstein and the horrible things he did to his victims is absolutely newsworthy, we've covered it on the show quite a bit, the extent to which Jeffrey Epstein has become a kind of totem among a certain sort of conspiratorial right-wing politics is both fascinating and, and quite instructive to me. To some on the right, Jeffrey Epstein is the skeleton key that unlocks the Illuminati and the secret cabal of child sex traffickers that the proverbial they don't want you to know about. And with that comes a host of cascading associated conspiracies about everything from vaccines to cell phone towers. And to be quite clear here, it really is the case that Jeffrey Epstein was enmeshed in the upper echelons of American society in a totally disgusting and shameful way. That reality, though, is sort of the bedrock for what's built atop it. And that is built atop it is an obsession with him that has transcended those basic facts in a way that gets tied up with a whole number of other right-wing fever dreams. We actually saw just a perfect example of this a couple days ago when Aaron Rodgers, the broken down NFL quarterback and vaccine conspiracy peddler, went on an ESPN program that he's paid to go on and baselessly smeared late night TV host Jimmy Kimmel as one of Epstein's associates. This has something to do with the Epstein list that came out? <laughs> Feels like it. Feels like it. That's supposed to be coming out soon. That's supposed to be coming out soon. Look, this guy's been it's waiting in his wine people. cellar. Yeah. I've been waiting in my wine <laughs> cellar for this <laughs> thing. <laughs> a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't ah, happen. Please. <laughs> All right. All right. Obviously, a clip from this particular program was run on Jimmy Kimmel's show uh, whenever Aaron brought up the, the list and then. Jimmy mocked him for it. Mm -hmm. Aaron has not forgotten about that. But here we are sitting right in front of that nice bottle of scotch. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I'm waiting to celebrate something. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, something he's awesome. been waiting That's for the that. one. <laughs> you been waiting for hey, I'll tell you what. If that list comes out, I definitely will be popping, popping some sort of bottle. Right. So you get that, right? Aaron Rodgers, who's sort of deep in this conspiracist world, who's done incredible amounts of actual tangible damage with his vaccine denialism. I mean, huge amounts, right? Sitting there like the this big moment, this big reveal, right? The secret cabal is going to be revealed. And maybe Jimmy Kimmel's on the list. Now, Jimmy Kimmel did not appreciate being smeared in that way. The late night host, who we must stress, has zero connection to Epstein, was not in the documents released, lit into Rogers on social media and threatened to take him to court. And the very next day, the host of that program had to go on TV and try to clean up Aaron Rodgers' mess. I can see exactly why Jimmy Kimmel felt the way he felt, especially with his position. But I think Aaron was just trying to talk shit. Now, did it go too far? Uh, and a lot of people... Uh... Jimmy Kimmel certainly said that was the yeah. case. We and I immediately upon it happening, trying to be like, ooh, you know. But that is Aaron and Jimmy. <laughs> that is just one example of the way that Epstein conspiracies are sort of weaponized, this kind of all-purpose tool against the conspiratorial rights perceived enemies, right? And I have to say, it is really just so unbelievable that Fox News, Republicans, conservatives have made Jeffrey Epstein Jeffrey Epstein, the focal point of their worldview about who the bad guys are in society. Because let's just look at the facts here. The guy in American politics most closely associated with Epstein, and particularly Epstein's scandals, is, I think, inarguably Donald Trump. 
Back in 2019, when Epstein was arrested for sex trafficking charges, there was renewed interest in his past misdeeds, including, crucially, that he had been nailed for this before and had pled guilty in 2008 for what prosecutors called soliciting an underage prostitute. But it was that subsequent, that sweetheart deal that Epstein re received as a result that became an issue. The highly unusual plea agreement allowed billionaire hedge fund manager Jeffrey Epstein to spend a mere 13 months in county jail, when the federal government may have had enough evidence to put him in prison for life. This, according to police and prosecution documents obtained by NBC News. And tonight, there's a new focus on the prosecutor who helped arrange that deal a decade ago, now the Secretary of Labor. Okay, remember this? The number one example of the elite lack of accountability for this guy, Jeffrey Epstein, is the fact that a U.S. attorney hammered out this plea deal that was just unheard of, that just basically let him get away with it and then go back to reoffending. The guy that gave him that deal, Donald Trump appointed him, Alex Acosta, in his cabinet, the guy who gave the Epstein deal. He got a cabinet position because he was appointed by Donald Trump. And it was a big scandal at the time. Acosta ultimately resigned in 2019 amid renewed interest in the Epstein case, although he defended the plea deal until the end. A lengthy investigation from Trump's Department of Justice ultimately found that Acosta exhibited poor judgment, although it cleared him of any official misconduct. Now, around the time that Epstein was negotiating that deal, the one that basically allowed him to more or less get away scot-free and go back to reoffending, he was represented by a number of high-profile attorneys, including former counsel O.J. Simpson, Alan Dershowitz, and former Bill Clinton investigator Kevin St Ken Starr. You may remember those two men for a different reason. Back in 2020, Donald Trump brought both of them on to assist his legal defense during his first impeachment trial. Get me the Epstein defense team! We should note, both men have defended their actions as Epstein's lawyers. Dershowitz also declined to comment to NBC News about these new Epstein documents. And not long before that impeachment trial that they defended him in, remember, Jeffrey Epstein famously died in federal custody in a federal detention center here in New York City. That, that was the incident that sparked countless Epstein didn't kill himself memes that went everywhere in the, in the conspiratorial part of the internet. It transformed the sex offender into the current status of kind of fulcrum of right-wing conspiracy theories worldwide. Now, investigators later said Epstein was not killed, that it was in fact a suicide, and that it occurred amid, quote, significant misconduct at the federal prison. A federal prison under the purview of the Department of Justice, which at the time was run by, let me see if I have this right here. Oh yeah, Trump's Attorney General Bill Barr. Bill Barr called Epstein's death a perfect storm of screw-ups, sort of a passive way to describe a debacle that happened under your authority. So Donald Trump's Justice Department was overseeing Jeffrey Epstein when he died in prison. Of course, the real link here is the personal relationship between Donald Trump and Epstein himself, the one you see on your screen right now. Trump has denied any connection to Epstein's crimes. He declined to comment to NBC News about these new documents, but it's undeniable, it's just an established fact, the two men were once friendly. Back in 1992, before Epstein's first arrest, the two men were captured on video, partying at Trump's Mar-a-Lago golf home, and, crucially, leering at women together. One decade later, Trump went on the record with New York Magazine to praise Epstein in these words, and I will quote them. I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life. That's a hell of a quote, isn't it? About a guy who we would later find out was trafficking girls, sexual abuse. And though Trump later claimed he and Epstein had a falling out, his well wishes didn't end there, okay? Just listen to how Donald Trump responded from the White House briefing room after being asked about Epstein's associate, Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest. I don't know. I haven't really been following it too much. I just wish her well, frankly. Uh, I've met her numerous times over the years, especially since I lived in Palm Beach, and I guess they lived in Palm Beach. Uh, but I wish her well. I wish her... 
This is the one. They had just had the Alex Acosta scandal. Everyone knows what happened with Jeffrey Epstein. Donald Trump, as president from the podium, says, oh, yeah, knew her socially. Wish her well. Rooting for her. Hope she's doing fine. Again, to be clear, at the time, Ghislaine Maxwell was in prison after being charged federally with conspiring with Epstein to sexually abuse minors. But even when given the opportunity to walk those comments back, Trump refused. Her friend or boyfriend... Epstein. ...was either killed or committed suicide in jail. She's now in jail. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I wish her well. I'd wish you well. I'd wish a lot of people well. Good luck. Let them prove somebody was guilty. I mean, you do know that... Oh, so you're saying you hope she doesn't die in jail. Is that what you mean by wish her well? Her boyfriend died in jail, and people are still trying to figure out how did it happen. Was it suicide? Was he killed? And I do wish her well. Two things here that are important. One is you can see the parts of the Internet and the media world that Trump gets his own information from. I mean, remember, this guy's the president who directs the Department of Justice, right, that report to him, that had... Epstein in custody, like maybe someone killed him, maybe he died, I don't know. We should also note that they did prove somebody was guilty. Ghislaine Maxwell was convicted by a jury on those charges, serving a 20-year sentence in prison. But of course, the facts, you know, I mean, I'm <laughs> bagging my head against the wall here. But I know full well the facts don't matter to the conspiracy crowd. That These are the type of folks who engage in what has become quite clearly a kind of watered-down... QAnon talking point, promote anti-vaccine nonsense, things are all false flags, right? It's the kind of world, and particularly the kind of voters, in short, who seem most drawn to support conspiracy theorist Robert F. Kennedy Jr. for president. You weren't ever on Jeffrey Epstein's jet, were you? Yeah, I was on Jeffrey Epstein's jet two times. I was on it uh, in 1993. And I was on it in, and I went to Florida with my wife and uh, two children to visit my mom over Easter. Um, My my wife had some kind of relationship with Glenn Maxwell, and they offered us a ride to Palm Beach. So I went then, and then on another occasion, I flew again with my family, with I think four of my children, and. and uh, and Mary, my wife, to Rapid City, South Dakota, to go fossil hunting. You were not after these get well. I mean, twice. You know, with my family, once to go fossil hunting. But aside from that, now Kennedy denies any wrongdoing. He's not been accused of any misconduct. To be clear. Because, you know, lots of people, it seems, again, this is part of what sort of makes the scandal so tantalizing for people, right? Lots of people flew on Epstein's private jet, including former President Bill Clinton. That's also established and well-known. But again, to the conspiracist crowd that traffics almost exclusively in loose connections and innuendo, it should presumably be relevant that two of the three most prominent candidates for president of the United States of America have tangible connections to Jeffrey Epstein. In fact, if you at home watching this are something of a single-issue anti-Epstein voter, there's only one major candidate for president without any meaningful ties to Epstein. His name's Joe Biden. Keep that in mind the next time Fox News tries to use Epstein to smear the left.